In chapter 30 is um, Brendan. It has to be the most incredible transformation in the history of middle school. No, not Chase Ambrose going from thug bully sociopath to human being, although surely that's in the top 10. I'm talking about the fact that Kimberly likes me now. I swear, I'm black and blue from pinching myself to make sure I'm not dreaming, but it's 100% legit. I even call her Kimmy. It's like a pet name. Nobody else calls her that. If that's not the real thing, I don't know what is. It was the big fight at Portland Street that did it. When Kimmy saw me sacrificing myself and getting the snot knocked out of me, trying to protect her from Aaron and Bear, that put it over the top. I was like a knight in shining armor, although Kimmy says it's mostly because she was so amazed I wasn't dead. Whatever. Before this, she had trouble remembering my name. Anyway, a bruised jaw is a small price to pay for a girlfriend, especially the most mad awesome one in all of Hiawassee. I'm not even worried that she might go back to her old crush on Chase. It looks like Chase and Shoshana might be starting to turn, in, turn into something. Not that I'm planning double dates with them anytime soon. No sense playing with fire. Chase played his first football game of the season last weekend and really tore it up, scoring three touchdowns and gaining 180 yards. Shoshana annoyed the crowd by standing in the middle of the bleachers and delivering a long speech about how she isn't a football fan and never intends to become one. Maybe, maybe not. After all, people change. Look at Chase himself. Or Kimmy. Or the video club. We know less than zero about football, but we got some amazing footage of that game. Coach Davenport liked it so much that he made us the Hurricanes' official videographers. The pep band has a new student musical director, too, Joel Weber. The players are kind of nice to us now. Well, most of them, anyway. Aaron and Bear are still their usual Neanderthal selves. Then again, everything that happened pretty much exposed those two as the bullies and delinquents they are. Who cares about them? They're kind of outcasts. Chase says even the other Hurricanes pretty much ignore them. Not that those two being losers was ever a new slash to me. Chase is back in the video club where he belongs. In fact, he's a bigger star there than in football. The word just came in that Warrior took first place in the National Video Journalism Contest. Chase is the sole winner since Shoshana removed her name from the project when she thought he attacked Joel. Miss DeLeo was trying to get that fixed. The Vidiots have adopted Mr. Solway as our official mascot. We wanted to make him our official war hero, but he objects to the word hero. He's not too crazy about war, either. Well, he may not let us call him our hero, but he's definitely my hero because of what he did in court for Chase that day. But of course, he was a hero long before any of us was born. The United States Army was so convinced of it that they awarded him their very highest honor. Just don't try to ask him about it. I can't remember anything, kid, so don't bug me, he barks in his best crabby old man voice. Talk to Chase. He'll tell you what it's like to blank something out. Actually, Chase is recalling more and more these days. He's still got a long way to go before his amnesia is totally cured. But every now and then, I'll see him in the school halls, gray in the face and haunted. And I know he's just remembered some horrible thing he did in his former life. Poor guy. Maybe one day he'll get used to it. And it won't bother him so much, but I'm not holding my breath. I always thought the purpose of Video Club was to create something so off the chain that it goes viral and makes you famous. But that's not the point at all. The best thing about Video Club is the people you discover along the way, like Mr. Solway. Or Kimmy, who probably never would have noticed me otherwise. Or Chase, who I spent three quarters of my life being afraid of and is now one of my best friends. Which doesn't mean that you have to give up on the viral part. Kimmy took my raw footage from one man band and edited out everything except the part where I'm trapped in the tuba being shot with a fire extinguisher foam. Then she posted it to YouTube under the title Worst Tuba Fail Ever, and it's already been viewed 360,000 times. Unbelievable. I have a viral video. Well, technically it's Kimmy's video, since she posted it on her own account and never mentioned my name, not even once. I'm just the doofus in the tuba wriggling like a hula dancer and foaming at the mouth, but it still counts. It proves anything is possible. Kimmy and me, a YouTube sensation. 
even Chase Ambrose, turning out to be a nice guy.